the Hobart edition of the Around Australia program, written by Michael Sharlin, published in 1967, as well as holding an interesting text. The booklet has a series of colour photographs in the middle. These are interesting because they show several things that no longer exist, as well as other things that have dramatically changed. The Tudor Court model village was a scale model of an English Tudor village. In the 1950s, model villages were popular tourist attractions across the globe before slowly going out of vogue. It was all built by one man, John Pallotta. He had been a victim of polio from childhood and with limited mobility, he was able to create the fantasy. The man at the centre of this photo is Vic Garth. He was the official Hobart town crier for two decades. Hobart had such an employee right up until the millennium. He walked the streets, ringing his bell, crying, hear ye, hear ye. Besides the colour scheme, there are a few clues that the attraction was once here. The MS Empress of Australia, from 1964 to 1972, the ferry travelled between Hobart and Sydney once a fortnight. The ship could carry up to 250 passengers in cabins, 91 cars, 16 trucks and 160 intermodal containers. Long travel time and unpredictable crossings led, as much as anything, to the ferry being abolished. Today, the spot on the wharf where the Empress used to sit is home to the CSIRO. Queen Elizabeth II first visited Tasmania in 1954. She came on the Royal Yacht Gothic. At the time, the Queen of England was regarded by many as the most glamorous woman in the world. This is her at the Hobart State Ballroom. The entire city was decorated in her honour. Among other things, the Hydroelectric Commission turned its building into a display of an affection. At its pinnacle, they placed an ornamental crown. The Art Deco masterpiece designed by architects A and K Henderson and Partners was completed in 1940. Today, it is home to the Hobart City Council. Sullivan's Cove today is missing two large piers. This map from 1954 shows King's Pier and Queen's Pier. By the 1970s, they'd both been demolished. Debates about rebuilding them delivered nothing. Today instead, a private marina sits roughly in the middle between where they had both once stood. There was already a kind of basic roundabout outside where the Hobart train station was, but it came time for an upgrade. Designed locally by Jeff Parr, working with two others, the brief was to provide a centrepiece for the busy roundabout, which would also serve as a memorial for Hobart's former Lord Mayors. Here is the spot, some time before construction. Here you can see it being built, with a then still functioning train station behind it. The roundabout opened in 1963, for decades before the Tasman Highway was built to meet the head of Davie Street. The roundabout was how everyone entered Hobart. It was built in perfect ratio to the city that it served. As recently as 2015, the Railway Appreciation Society, or ERCRAS, named Hobart Railway Roundabout the best roundabout in the whole world. When built, Hobart had a population of 100,000. It's now 150% larger than that. As taller and wider buildings have been built at its edges, the roundabout has become a dwarf. The trees within it have grown so large to obscure it. The fountain in the centre is always turned off and there is now so much traffic passing through it has become the number one location for small traffic accidents in Tasmania. It is older now and its looks have faded, but it remains too pretty to kill. So this book here, it talks about how Hobart was when it was published. It goes over things about 
how Hobart at the time was the first city in Australia to ban the honking of horns unless absolutely necessary. It talks about how talks about how there were animals running wild, domestic animals like this, cats and dogs, particularly cats, would roam in packs through the street. And it also mentions that at the time the time zones were different to what they are now. And in summer, sunrise was at 3.30 a.m. So everything is different about the past, including the time.